Would you pray differently if you didn't just hope God wanted to hear from you, but that he loves to hear from you and that he will answer? Well, Luke 11 verses five to eight says this, then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. Well, you know, when people heard a parable like this, they knew that there would be a character in the story that they were to identify with. So who are you and, and who am I in that story? Well, Jesus makes it clear that we're the one asking for bread. He says, suppose you had a friend. He's putting us in the position of asking so that we can learn about approaching God. So let's stop and take a look at the culture of that time when Jesus was telling this story. You see, food was not readily available like today. There were no 24-hour grocery stores, no freezers or fridges for storing or stocking up food. Bread was made daily, and it would go bad if not eaten up within a few days. There was no preservatives. And, and secondly, hospitality was a huge value in this culture, almost seen as a duty. See, visitors were welcomed and cared for regardless of the hour that they arrived. So here's the dilemma. A late evening guest arrives, but the host has no food. Ancient homes, you see, usually only had one room. Every member of the family slept in that same room. So if you deserved a family, you would risk waking up the entire family. So this is essentially Jesus' question. Who has the nerve to wake up your friend and possibly their entire family in the middle of the night to ask for food? You don't even know if your friend would have three loaves of bread. He might have eaten up all his food that day. You see the friend's response, it's actually understandable. Don't wake up my kids. Don't bother me and my family in the middle of the night. And anyone who has put kids to bed understands the friend's response. So if we are the one asking for bread, then who is God in the story? Is God the friend in the story? Well, here's the twist. Before you liken the friend to God, well, then you've actually missed the point of the story. God is not like the friend. Here's the point Jesus is making. God is not like the grumpy neighbor that's annoyed if you ask him for something at an inconvenient time. God doesn't get ticked off and annoyed when you ask him for what you need. No matter when you ask for it, he's actually available anytime. He's approachable, he's gracious, he's generous, and he's ready to meet our needs when we ask him. He wants us to ask with boldness. He doesn't want us to shy away and feel like we're bothering him. I don't know about you, but what hindered me in my prayer life for years, I was often afraid to ask my father for something and I have a good dad, but I felt like I had to have all my reasons ready, you know, to defend while I was asking. So I would often shy away and I just go solve it on my own. God helps those who help themselves, right? Well, culture says independence equals maturity. But here's what God says. Dependence equals maturity. God helps those who call for help. You know, I developed an independence that unfortunately to this day can be my greatest hindrance in my prayer life. I can feel like don't bother God with your little problems, somehow thinking he'll be proud of me if I prove to him I can take care of myself. Here's the point. Jesus says, you too can come to God. He's not like the friend. He's not like a grumpy neighbor. He actually wants you to ask for what you need. Are you afraid to approach God? Do you feel you'll be an inconvenience to him, that you're bothering him, that perhaps you should just work it out before asking for help? Jesus says, come and ask. Look what the next verse says. Ask and it'll be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. God is so different from the friend. 
He begs us to bother him, to come to him with shameless audacity to his door at any time, to ask and seek and knock. And these words are a reminder to keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Persistence is a keeping on. Don't quit, don't hold back, don't apologize for being asking him. Don't be so Canadian. This guy asked for bread in the midnight with shameless audacity. Does that sound like the appropriate, politically correct way to approach God? Apparently, yes. Jesus tells us to be like this when we pray.